All right, hello class. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing okay. Welcome to this lesson on 7.2. We're gonna be talking about angles in the unit circle. Uh, the unit circle, uh, it's part of technically part of this lesson, but we're really not gonna put that much of an emphasis on it. Uh, we're just, you know, there will be a circle in the lesson, uh, but we'll be focusing more specifically on the unit circle in the next lesson in 7.3. But this lesson is mostly on angles. Okay, so first off, the learning objective is to understand angles in the standard position. So the vocab includes coterminal angles, the initial side, radian, radian measures, reference angles, standard position, and the terminal side. All right, so we're going to be talking about angles and standard position first. So there's a diagram um, right there, and it's and it labels the initial, the terminal side, and it labels this angle which we call theta. Right? Remember that this this uh, symbol right here that's just a Greek letter, theta. Okay, so I uh, use we use theta a lot for angles. Uh, you can use X, you can use uh, any any Greek letters, really, alpha, beta. You know, you can use anything to denote an angle, but theta is the most commonly used. So let's, this theta right here is considered to be in what we call a standard position, okay? The standard position is basically when you have the vertex at the origin, you have the initial side on the x-axis, on the positive x-axis, and you have the terminal side uh, just anywhere else on the uh, Cartesian plane. So the terminal side um, is called the terminal side because that's where it ends, right? So that's where the angle ends, okay? So the terminal side is the other ray that forms the actual angle, okay? Uh, so if I wanted this to be a, for example, a 125 degree angle, well, I need my terminal side to be where it is here, right? This is a good uh, terminal side for 125 degrees, for example. If I wanted my terminal side to be 100 and, uh, let's say, uh, 90 degrees, right? If I needed it to be 90 degrees, then the terminal side will have to be, you know, on the y-axis so that I could form a 90 degree angle from the initial side to that terminal side. Okay, so it just really depends what angle you want, and that'll tell you where the terminal side ends, okay? All right, so there are a couple ways that you can uh, describe an uh, angle in standard position, okay? There's actually a few uh, ways that we'll describe here. So um, the first way is that you can describe it as a positive angle measure, okay? So basically, the uh, positive angle measure is measured counterclockwise counterclockwise, so opposite of a clock, um, and that is the positive angle measure, and it's measured from the initial side to the terminal side. All right, so in this case, we said, let's just say that the angle is 120 degrees. In this case, the angle from the x-axis to that terminal side is 120 degrees. That's one way of measuring that angle. Another way of measuring that angle is as a negative angle measure. So negative means clockwise. So remember that a full circle is 360 degrees. So if you go one full circle, it's 360. Well, if if one of this if uh, one side of the circle is 120 degrees, which is the blue side, then the other side has to be 240 degrees because it has to add up to 360, right? So if we did 360 minus 120, that'll give us 240 degrees, which is the angle uh, here denoted in. Um, that is um, the 240 degrees in red. All right, so that will be clockwise, and therefore that will be a negative angle. Okay, so this right here is a negative angle. So we'll put like a negative 240 right there. So that ang negative angle measure is negative 240 degrees. Now the next way that you can denote an, uh, an angle is with a measure that is greater than 360. So uh, greater than 360 means that you're doing more than one full circle. So if we started out at 120 degrees, so if normally this angle right here is 120 degrees, well then I know that if I do an, a one full 360 from that 120 degrees, then that means I would have to have 360 plus 120, and that would be 480 degrees. And I can keep doing this and do another full circle 
which means add another 360 degrees, and then three full circles, that's an adding another 360 degrees, and so on. And then I will still end up at the same position, but at a different angle. All right, so if I were to do the negative angle measure, that means I'm going, three, I'm going 360 degrees again, but on clockwise side, so on the negative side. So remember that the, origin, that the original negative angle, which I'll label here, the original negative angle was negative 240 degrees. So that means if I'm doing a 360 from that negative 240 degrees, that means I got to add another 360 to it, right? But in the negative side. So really I need to take away another 360, which is why I have this right here, negative 360 minus 240 and that will give me a negative 600 degrees and I can, again I can do this in another 360 and which means I'll end up at negative 960 degrees negative 960 and then I can keep doing another 360 and that'll be more negative all right so those are the, the, the four different ways uh, so for the uh, greater than 360 remember that the pattern was that you start off with your positive angle and you add 360 to that positive angle so if you want one full circle, that's plus 360, two full circles, plus uh, another 360, okay? That's the pattern for greater than. The pattern for uh, beyond 360 for negative angles, well, what you do is you take the negative angle measure, right? Which remember, we, took the, we found a negative angle measure from doing 360 minus the, um, the positive angle measure, and that's how we got 240. But that's gonna be negative 240, and then you take away 360 every single time, depending on how many full circles you wanna go. So that's how you find the different angle measures. And the reason why we have so many different uh, ways to express an angle measure is because all those numbers lead to the same spot because you're just going one full circle and you're still at the same position. Okay, so, uh, so those are the four different representations. Now, like we said, uh, the, all of these angle representations are in standard form and they share a terminal side. So we call them coterminal angles. So if I were to ask you, what is the coterminal angle for an angle of 120 degrees? Well, then you will tell me, okay, well, an, a coterminal angle could be negative 240. It could be negative 600. It could be negative 960. Um, or it could be 480 degrees, for example. Those are uh, examples of coterminal angles to the 120 degrees. All right, so let's look at an example, example one. So given the initial and terminal sides, find the positive angle measure, a negative angle measure, a positive angle measure beyond 360, and a negative angle measure beyond 360. So basically the four representations we discussed earlier. So Notice that uh, they give us this angle in between the, the uh, negative y-axis and the terminal side. Okay, so they give us the negative, 100, uh, negative 25, or 25 degrees, rather. So what we need to do, uh, and, I, and I'll label this here so you can see it. Um, so these are the four different representations for the uh, solution. So let's do the positive angle measure uh, first. So we know that this, if this is if 25 degrees, then that means that I need to figure out what this side is. Now that side, uh, how do I figure out what that side is? Well, I know that um, I know that from, and I'll do this in another color. I know from here to there is 180 degrees. So basically each quadrant is 90 degrees, okay? So, uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, label it that way uh, so you can see. So from the positive x-axis to there is 90 degrees. From the positive y-axis to the negative x-axis is another 90 degrees, which means 180, right? Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, call this 180 degrees. Uh, and then from the negative x-axis to the uh, negative y-axis is 270. So I basically add 90 to get to that. 
So it, in order to get this um, black angle, I need to do 180 degrees, or I need to take uh, 270 degrees, right, which is all of that red, right, from x-axis to the negative y-axis, and then subtract 25. So I need to do 270 degrees, take away 25 degrees, and that will give me my angle for, tw um, you know, my positive angle. So in this case, I have 200... 45 degrees. Okay, so again, re re repeating that from the a positive x axis to the negative y axis is 270 degrees because 90 and then a 90 and then another 90. And then I had to take away the 25 in between and that'll give me the rest of it. Okay, uh, so that's the positive angle measure. So now we know that this is 270 degrees basically. All right, so, or 200, I'm um, sorry, 245, not 275, uh, 245 degrees. All right, so if we want to find the negative angle measure, that's going to be this angle, okay? So we know that's 245. We need to figure out what this angle is on this side. Well, we know that this is going to be from here to here, is negative 90 degrees. Um, and then I just have to add in another 25 degrees, right? So I need to do 90 and then an 25. And then I'll call it a negative angle because remember negative is clockwise. So basically I just have to do a negative 90 plus a negative 25. Or basically negative 90 minus 25, same thing. Uh, which in this case is going to be negative 115 degrees. Okay, so that's my angle for that. For my positive angle measure beyond 360, we know that this is now, we know that that was 245 degrees. So if that's 245 degrees, I'm going to do another 360 from that point, right? So that means I need to do... that, right? So uh, this kind of looks a little weird, so I'll, I'll race to this so I can show you what that angle looks like. All right, so I'll just write out that it was 245 degrees before. Um, so we need to go here and then a full, another full circle. So basically like that, okay? So one full circle from that point. So I got to add 360 to this. All right, so that's zero, uh, carry the one here. So that's going to be 605 degrees. All right, and then a negative angle measure beyond 360. Well, we know that we know that this entire angle was uh, negative 115. So let me write that over here, negative 115. And what we're going to do is do that angle and then do a full circle from there. And that's how my angle would look like if I were to draw it out. And so I need to do another 360, right? So I'm going to be adding basically another 360 to this. So add those together and you're going to have a negative angle. So my angle is negative 475 degrees. All right. And that's how you do it, guys. So that's how you do um, all the, the four angle representations. And they really mean the same thing. It's the same position. It's just different uh, angle measures. All right. So let's talk about finding reference angles. And what are, what are those? So a reference angle is the acute angle that is formed between the terminal side and the x-axis. So it's that angle in between uh, the... Uh, actually, so let's say this is your angle in... in uh, standard position. It's always from that terminal side to the x-axis. The, the x-axis that is the closest to it, right? So you'll, we'll see how this looks like. So the um, first off, you need to remember your quadrants, right? So remember that quadrant one is the top right, then quadrant two is the top left, three and four and so on, right? So we're going to need to know those quadrants for, for the uh, guidelines that I'm about to show you. So the reference angle for an angle that is in 
quadrant one is equal to the positive angle in standard position. So uh, for example, uh, let's, look at, let's look at the angles in quadrant one. So the reference angle equals the positive angle in standard form. So that's just 30 degrees. So if I have an angle that with a terminal side in quadrant one, the reference angle is the same as the original positive angle. Now, what if I have a terminal side in quadrant two? Then the reference angle is going to be from that terminal side to the x-axis, the closest x-axis to it, right? Which is the negative x-axis. In that case, remember that this whole angle from the x-axis to the negative x-axis is 180. So I got to do 180 minus 60 or minus 120 and that will give me the 60 degrees, uh, the rest of it, okay? Remember that you have to add it to 180 for this case. So to find the quadrant two angle, reference angle, do 180 minus the positive angle. For terminal angles in quadrant three, to find the reference angle, you, simp you take 180, which is, remember 180 is, this whole thing is 180, and then add an extra, um, angle and that will give you the total angle right so to get the reference angle you simply subtract the positive angle measure minus 180 and that will give you the reference angle for reference angles in the fourth quadrant you have to for this one the entire thing is worth 360 right one full circle is 360. so if you got an angle that is for example 300 degrees then that means 300 plus 60 is going to be 360. Remember that one full circle is 360. So you take 360 minus the angle, the positive angle, and that will give you a reference angle. So those are your guidelines for finding um, the four different types of reference angles. All right, so let's look at an example. So find the reference angle for uh, the following angles given. Uh, so let me, let's go ahead and uh, draw the Cartesian plane for you guys, save some time here. So the reference angle for 130 degrees. So first off, let's draw 130 degrees in standard position, all right? So we have the initial side on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, 130 degrees. Remember that this is 90 degrees, so it has to be a little bit past that, and this is 180 degrees. So therefore, 130 degrees is probably around here, okay? Um, so then we'll say that that's 130 degrees. All right, so we got our uh, reference, we got our standard form, our standard position angle, rather. So now to find the reference angle, I need to take away 180 minus 130. All right, so and that will give me 50 degrees. All right, that's my reference angle, 180 minus uh, 130. And I'll write it over here. All right, that's it for my reference angle. Pretty straightforward. It's just that angle closest to the uh, x-axis. All right, so the 250 degree angle, we have initial side on the positive x-axis. So 250, this is 180. And then this is 270 degrees, 90, 90, 90, right? And so 250 is between 180 and 270. So it's going to be something like this. And so uh, this reference, this uh, initial side should be on the positive x-axis. It looks a little bit off, but it's on the x-axis. And so this here is 250 degrees. To find the reference angle, we need that's going to be to the nearest x-axis, which is the negative uh, x-axis. So I got to do 250 minus 180. So 250 degrees minus the 180 side, and that gives me 70 degrees. So that reference angle is 70 degrees. Pretty straightforward. That's all. That's all you got to do. Just follow the guidelines. All right, so we're going to talk about two different measures, uh, units of measurement for angles. So there are, there are actually more than two, but we're going to discuss two in this lesson, okay? The first one is the degree, uh, we, which we know about degrees. We've been using them this, in this lesson thus far. 
So we know that a full circle is 360 degrees, which means that one degree is one three one 360th of a circle. All right, because there's a total 360 of them to make one full circle. So we know what a degree looks like. But what about the next unit of measure, the radian? So a radian is, so the radian measure of an angle is equal to the central angle. A central angle is uh, an angle, it's basically when you have a circle, right? The vertex is in the origin. Um, and the central angle is like the angle uh, formed. Uh, so for example, uh, this green part right here with those two rays intercepted by that arc. This is the arc right here. Our, the arc is four. So that this angle right here uh, is the central angle. Uh, so it's in the center of that circle, which, we, which is why we call it a central angle. Uh, so a radian measure is when the angle is equal to the central angle whose arc length is equal to its radius. Okay, so for example, a measure, a radian measure of one radian is when uh, the arc length is equal to the radius of that circle. So the radius of this circle is four in this example. And so if I were to travel along this circle the same distance as the radius, which in this case the radius is four, this is right here my arc length. So if I were to travel around that circle uh, the same distance as my radius, then I will have traveled one radian around that circle. Okay, so that's the definition of uh, one radian. Now, if I were to travel uh, an around that circle twice the, um, the length of the radius, which is the second uh, diagram here, then I will have traveled two radians, okay? Uh, an angle of two radians. So that's what a radian is, okay? It's the measure of angle in, uh, in which the arc length is equal to the radius, okay? So a radian, it turns out, is approximately 57 degrees. It's 57.3 degrees. We'll show you what that conversion is in a second, but that makes sense. So a radian is about 57.3 degrees, and that will be, for any circle of any radius, uh, a radian is gonna be 57.3 degrees. So uh, remember that to convert between degrees and radians, we need to know that a full circle is 360 degrees. So if a full circle is 360 degrees, it turns out that uh, a full circle is actually two pi radians, okay? So know those two conversion factors, right? Full circle is 360, a full circle is two pi. All right, and if you remember the formula for circumference, this will help, two pi times r. So, you know, two pi, is a number that is quite commonly used. So uh, this means that 360 degrees has to equal to 2 pi, which means that half of a circle, 180 degrees, is pi. All right, so if I ask you how many radians is half of a circle, you would tell me pi, pi radians. So because we have those conversion factors, and that's the one that you want to dedicate, think of pi as 180. All right, 180 degrees. So if I wanna convert degrees to radians, what I have to do is, let's say I got an angle in degrees, then what I have to do is I have to do a little dimensional analysis. You may remember, you may do this in chemistry or in a science class when you're trying to cancel units out. So if I start out with degrees, I need the degrees here to cancel out. So uh, because I need them to cancel out, and I'll do this in red instead here, uh, if it lets me. Um, so they'll, they'll cancel out, um, So which means I need the degrees on the bottom side. Okay, so when I'm converting from degrees to radians, I need the degrees, the 180 degrees in a circle, in a half circle, to be on the bottom. I need the pi rads to be on top because I need degrees to cancel. So degrees, uh, the units only cancel when you have one on top, one on bottom. All right, and therefore I want rads on top. If I want to convert from radians to degrees, I need the radians to be in the bottom to cancel out with the radians on top. So if I got, let's say X is like two, two radians, then I need the radians units to be on the bottom so that they cancel out just like that, leaving me with degrees as my answer. 
All right, so we'll show you how, how this works. So example three, and I'll leave the conversion up just like that so you can see. So if we want to convert from one uh, from pi, rads to degrees, right now this is this is pi over seven rads. So this is in rads, which means that when I use my conversion factor, which one do I use? Well, I know that 180 degrees is pi radians. So I know that I need to figure out which one goes on the top, which one goes on the bottom. So I know that radians needs to cancel, so it needs to go on the bottom, okay? Whatever you need to cancel with needs to go on the bottom or needs to be opposite of where your other unit is. Uh, so this is in rad, so that means pi rad, and degrees has to be on top, which is 180 degrees. All right, so now the rads cancel. Notice also that the pi cancels, and you're left with 180 divided by 7. So we have 180 divided by 7 degrees. And that's going to be a number. We're going to do that on the calculator. I'll do it on my phone, actually. If my phone will let me. Uh, 25.7 degrees. All right. Now let's let's convert degrees to radians. So 75 degrees. So I have 75 degrees. I know that I have to have degrees on the bottom to cancel. And I know that I have to have radians on the top because that's what I want. So I know that 180 degrees has to be on the bottom then. 180 has to be in the bottom because that's degrees. And pi has to be on top because that's radians. So now the degrees cancel. And it looks like I have 75 pi over 180. And then I just got to reduce it. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to divide. Let's do. Uh, let's see, let's do 75. 180 divided by. Yeah, so let's divide this by five. Top and bottom. And then this will give me 15 pi over 36. All right, and that will be fully reduced. That's if I reduce that fraction, okay, which I highly recommend. So if you want to convert this as a decimal, remember that you're going to use pi is 3.14. So you can use 3.14 um, as an approximation. And so this will be uh, 1.3. 0, 08 radians okay so you can do it as a decimal or you could do it as a uh, pi it doesn't as pi it doesn't really matter this is the exact representation and then this is the approximate representation so this right here is approximate and this here is uh, exact all right so now let's do the last one one rad so we can finish this off so one rad uh, you need you know that rads have to be on the bottom, so pi has to be on the bottom. Degrees on top, 180 degrees. All right, so just think I think about that way, and it's really easy to remember. The rads cancels, so that means that uh, one rad is 180 divided by pi degrees, and it turns out that 180 divided by approximately 3.14 is going to give me 57.3 degrees. Is that look familiar well that was the definition that was what I told you earlier that one rad was about 57.3 degrees uh, and that is why that's because of that conversion factor all right that is it for the video guys I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope you uh, learned a few things now I'll see you in the next one